Welcome back for the fourth and final of this four-part series about passing property at death. I'm Greg with the Ashcraft Firm, and la uh, the first week we talked to you about passing property by your estate, and in the second week we talked to you about passing property by contract. Last week we talked about passing property through joint tenancy, and this week we're going to talk about the pros and cons of passing property through a trust. So what is a trust? There are actually a lot of terms for the type of trust I'm talking about here. Some people call it a living trust. Some people call it a revocable trust, or some people call it a revocable living trust. But essentially what I'm talking about is the type of trust that you can change, you can amend it as you're living. Um, this is usually the basis of, a, of an estate plan. Um, and so, so what is that trust? What does it really mean to have a trust? A trust is essentially a bucket. So this is your trust bucket. And it, let's imagine that you own a piece of real property and you own it in the name of you and your spouse. And when you pass away, the spouse is probably not gonna have a problem with uh, probate or anything like that if, they're, if you're both listed on that, on that piece of real property. But when the second of you passes away, there's no terms on how it's gonna be split up or anything like that. Uh, if you created a will, then it's gonna to go to probate court. Remember that will is a letter to the probate judge telling them how you want your property to be distributed. A trust doesn't have to go through any of that because the trust is the actual owner of the property. You actually transfer title to your property into the name of the trust and you are the boss of the trust, also known as the trustee. So you as the trustee, you hold that bucket. You control the property within that trust bucket. Um, and you have terms within that trust document or that trust bucket that tell the successor trustees or the successor bosses of this trust bucket how it is that they're supposed to control the property when you can no longer control it yourself. So. Um, that's one of the big differences between maybe a will and a trust. This trust exists while you're living, um, and a will only comes into existence after you've passed away. Another difference between a trust and a will is a will is a letter to the probate judge, so it still has to go through probate. But a trust, a living trust, or a revocable living trust, avoids probate because there are terms within the trust that deal with everything. So. The, the cons to setting up a trust is that there's upfront expense to it. And really, there's going to be some upfront expense to doing it properly. So I, I just want to take a second to talk about the fact that there are a lot of easy, cheap methods to go through to set up a trust. But one of the fastest growing areas of law right now is trust litigation. And one of the main reasons there's so much trust litigation is because people are trying to go through the, the cheaper route up front of taking care of their trust or their estate planning. And there's so much intricacy that goes into this document for it to be done properly for your specific situation that it leads to a lot of litigation if you try and cut corners when you're doing this. So I just want to make a note of that really quick. Also, there's upfront time expended on creating a trust. It doesn't, like with the, when we talked about passing your property through the estate, it doesn't just happen. You have to actually be proactive and make it pass, pass through a trust and you have to make the trust. Um, so those are some of the downsides of creating a trust, but you can see the upsides actually, they point, if you have watched the previous videos, which if you haven't, I recommend it. Um, if you've watched the previous videos though, you'll see that these pros kind of match up with a lot of the downsides of the other ways to pass property. So first, one of the pros is it avoids probate. 
So we talked about in, in week one, we talked about how there's a lot of expense and time and you lose a lot of control and privacy when you go through the probate process. So all of that is avoided through a trust. Uh, the trust isn't public record. Nobody knows about it except you and the people that you have appointed to be in positions of power. Um, now, another thing here is uh, another good thing about the trust is that you have full control over who gets the property. So if you remember from weeks past, we talked about maybe with the, um, with the con passing property by contract, there were some constraints because the custodian of those financial agreements were in charge of uh, the terms of the trust. And so we couldn't really control who got the property. We could do beneficiary designations to do a, a somewhat good job of, of controlling who got the property, but we couldn't do contingencies and things like that the way we really wanted to. Here, you're in full control over the terms of this trust, which means you're in full control over who gets the property. Number three here, you're in full control over how they get the property. So here we can name people who are going to be in charge of the money. We can name beneficiaries. So these are the people who are actually going to benefit from the trust. Um, and we can stage how they get the property or we can structure it in ways that um, maybe your beneficiaries don't agree with, but that you think is best for them. And it's your property. So you should be in charge of who gets what and how. Um, number four here, asset protection. So this is something that it, I get a lot of clients who have interviewed a few attorneys before they come see me. And this is something that isn't talked about enough by estate planning attorneys generally. Um, so there are ways that you can protect assets for your beneficiaries. Um, there are methods with continuing trusts and things like that so that if your beneficiaries go through a divorce or if they go through bankruptcy or if they get into a car accident and there's a lawsuit, there are ways to protect your, your beneficiary's inheritance in a trust. And you can't do that in any other method. And there's also very flexible tax planning. Um, if you, you may or may not know that normally we're not thinking about death tax for the majority of the, of the population. There's a very small percentage of people who have to worry about death tax these days, um, or estate tax as they call it. But there are other taxes that we have to plan for um, upon somebody's death. And so there is very good tax planning so we can save as much as possible on taxes. Um, and then also you can, you get the opportunity, even though there's upfront uh, time here spent, that opportunity really, you can take that opportunity to organize your finances. So even though there's a lot of upfront time that you expend here, you're using that time to organize your finances. Um, and then also there's lifetime planning. So we said that this trust exists, not just when you pass away, but while you're living. So if something happens to you and you become disabled and you can't make your own decisions, then there's lifetime planning there where you can put terms in that trust that indicate what it is that you would like to have happen with your finances while you're living. So this, this really sums up uh, the cons and pros to creating a trust. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed watching. There's going to be a, a pop-up here at the end of the video if you'd like to contact our office to set up a free initial consultation. Uh, just, you know, or you can just give us a call. Whatever's most convenient for you. Thanks again for watching.